another win. The first of the long distance. The national flag is up. The national flag is down and they're away. Well, it looks like Dickens has a jump here. And uh, he's certainly taken the lead about a car's length on Beachy. It's Beachy and Giga now coming up to Ripco Corner. And Beachy takes the inside, hits the uh, inside with uh, Gigan in second place. It's Beachy on the outside, and Gigan takes the lead once more with McEwen in the second place, and Beachy now lining the Monaro up to come through and overtake uh, Jim McEwen into second place. Well, it looks as though uh, Ian Gigan now has lit out with about a 50-yard lead on Beachy. What a turn up on times, but the race is far from over. Fantastic <laughs> acceleration on this Holden. Mm. Into Lucas Loops now. It's still uh, Le Ian Gigan leading the Monaro of Beachy. Beachy's Beachy pushes him into Shell Corner and uh, possibly will try to line the Monaro up to come through on the inside. Here's a chance to overtake. The power's out and Beachy pulls out alongside, but they're very evenly matched now. It's Beachy coming out alongside and they're about at the 200 yard marker for uh, Ripco Corner. Well, Beachy certainly seems to have the running today. He has the inside line and he takes the lead. Oh, very nearly lost it. <laughs> there and uh, Norm Beachy takes the lead from Ian Gagan. Well quite an exciting tussle there and they're well into the second lap at the moment and coming up to the Bendigo end of Calder Raceway which is defined by Shell Corner. Gigan again putting in pressure here and closing up the gap a little bit. Uh, Beachy's in a fairly vulnerable position. He's out fairly wide. The tail is sideways, but he applies a bit of correction as Gigan brings the car up. And uh, you can see the difference in acceleration down the main straight. And it's two laps down and eight laps to go. Well, there's no doubt about it. The extensive preparation that Gigan has put into this car and the three race practice is certainly paying off. But Gigan has got through again on the inside of Repco, and this is Sam Boyd driving a Beachy as he gets the tail lead very, very wide and he accelerates up alongside Gagan as they go down the Girling Lockheed straight into Hack's Corner. And as they break this going into Hack's Corner, wonderful piece of driving there to tackle a, a driver of Beachy's calibre going into uh, Hack's Corner. And now you see the two lead cars. There's no point in going back any further in this field. They're too far behind. We'll keep on these two lead cars. And we have Gagan, two car lengths, one car length in front of Beachy coming round Shell Corner. Get the towels in, very, very wide. And here we come, Beachy's put the foot right through the floorboards as he goes up alongside Gagan. And he takes Gagan going down the main straight and he'll slip in under him. Going into a Repco Corner and Gagan's beat him on brakes again, going into Repco Corner. Wonderful exhibition of superb power driving by these drivers. And there's Beachy again with a towel wide out. Very wide as he goes out of Repco and up the Girling straight again. And here he goes, he's tackling Gagan again, he's six inches behind. Gagan apparently has got the better brakes of the two cars as they go into these corners at over 100 miles an hour. Peachy has the acceleration, Gagan has the brakes. It's just a, a matter of tactics here as they come round Shell Corner. Half a short head, that's all we've got by Gagan. Gets the towel in very wide, coming down again, and it's Gagan by a car's length. And Peachy. Beachy pulling out to overtake, and we've reached the four lap mark at the moment. Down into uh, Repco Corner they go. Beachy again trying to uh, seize an opportunity to bring the Monaro through. He's really pushing Gagan all the way. There would only be a pillow between these two cars, and that's about all. Gagan now on Girling Straight, motoring very rapidly indeed. He'd be up around the 85, 90 miles an hour point. Closes into the uh, reasonably tight right hander here at Hacks Corner. Well, certainly a turn up for the books. We thought uh, Norm would have really uh, had the Monaro out well and truly in front, but uh, the New South Welshman, Ian Gagan, is certainly making a race between these two cars. Again, the Monaro, very little difference in the uh, performance. Uh, whether or not the Calder circuit is more adequately suited to the Mustang, the debatable point. Uh, I know that uh, Norm was certainly a wee bit faster than Gagan yesterday in the practice sessions. Right down at the Repco corner now, Beachy again, very little between these two. 
They're over the halfway mark now, and now they're reaching the point where there's a, a few slower cars to try and negotiate. Beachy pulls up alongside, but uh, Gagan seems to draw her away as the two cars close down under brakes at Hack's Corner. It's Beachy out in the rough now, neck and neck they go, but uh, not quite enough there. Walk for the moment by one of the uh, slower FJs, which seems to be experiencing some bother. He's only just circulating around at a very, very slow speed. Well, here's a chance now for Beachy. And this almost appears like a two-car race, and believe you me, that's what it is. Well, at this point, they are six laps down, and Beachy has almost taken the lead. Oh, very, very nearly. <laughs> Did you see that, Holden? Well, on the second lap, Beachy nudged Gagan on the offside rear of the mudguard. If you have a look closely as the car goes through your screen, you'll see a big dent right on the rear of Gagan's mudguard where Beachy nudged him in the second lap. But they're going up into uh, Axe Corner now. But Gagan's definitely got the brakes. He's out braking the hold in every time. But as I mentioned earlier, when the gloves are down, Gagan always finds that little bit extra. But going up through the loops now into Shell Corner, and Beach is desperately trying to get past Gagan. He's got him on the inside of Shell now, and he's trying to push him out into the rough, and he'll now accelerate up here. or try and blast him off going down the main straight. But Gagan's pulled out that little bit extra, and there goes Beachy again. But whether he'll take him going into Repto, no. The Gagan car, the Mustang, has got him again under brakes, and they go through Repto corner, half a car length in front, Fantastic driving by these two very, very powerful motor cars and probably the two best touring car drivers in Australia. And they're rocketing up the back straight now, past the Girling sign, going under the Girling sign now, into the braking area, Hex Corner, and it's one car length. And Beach is really pulling something out. He went right into the dirt there to try and get through on the inside of Gagan, but Gagan's not having any. He reckons number two is your place today, Norman. That's where you're going to stay. He's going to topple the King of Cola today if it's the last thing he does. Wheel spin all the way through Shell Corner by the beachy car. Fantastic amount of wheel spin. Over correction, right out into the dirt. Gagan's not going to let up one moment as he goes past the start finish sign and Beachy has another go going into Repco Corner. Really closing down under the brake mark at Repco Corner. Beachy's on the outside, not in a very good line to get through. Gagan still maintains the lead and accelerates up Girling straight. Well, believe you me, I haven't seen such thrilling dicing between two large capacity touring cars for many a long day. Here's Beachy pulling out again on Girling straight and gets through and there's a black holding on the <laughs> outside which very nearly cops a, uh, a ribbon down one side. Again, Ian Gagan, and there's Beachy on the inside, but he again, Gagan uses tactics and uh, keeps him at bay. Well, one of the slower FJs is certainly slowing up the field around through Shell Corner, and uh, at this point, they're coming round, oh, out in the dirt, and uh, there's Gagan with his lights blinking on and off, the safety uh, feature some of the slower cars on the field. Well, Beachy's taken the lead once more, and down they go. They've swapped places down into uh, the inside running, and Gagan again Gagan. takes the lead. They're on their last lap at this point. It's Gagan around through the Repco corner, into Girling straight once more. Beachy's certainly working furiously to try and seize an opportunity to get through. There's Beachy bringing the Monaro up alongside Gagan, but Gagan seems to have that added acceleration at the closing portion of Girling straight. Past another FJ Holden. Into Lucas Loops they go, and it's still Gagan from Beachy. I feel that Beachy will get him on acceleration up the straight here. He'll have to try yep. uh, indeed, Ron, because the checkered flag is out, and there's Gagan now coming down. I don't think Norm's yes, going to do it. He might. He's pulling alongside, oh. but there's nothing between them. Oh, 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 fantastic oh, race. Well, I think we'd want a photo finish on that one. Oh, fantastic finish. I think we'd want a photo finish there. I would say uh, Norm Beachy by about a hubcap. Oh, <laughs> this crate went wild here. Well, certainly a, a wild race, that one. And uh, to our many viewers, they're possibly wondering why we didn't mention any more than just two cars in that well, race. But believe you me, that was a two-car race. That's the only two there cars in the race. Let's meet the Neptune. Jim McKeown.